Hello everyone. Uh, today I'm going to be doing a small experiment based on a post by Knox. Uh, you can find it in the learning and patent section of the forum. Uh, basically what the information in this forum claims is that by mixing certain uh, chemicals we can double the efficiency of 50 percent or higher nitric acid and also uh, eliminate the red fumes that we always see when we dissolve base metals. Um, I'm just going to briefly go over what is needed for this experiment and then I will take the materials outside and start. Uh, here we have 35 percent hydrogen peroxide. I got this off of eBay. It's uh, basically food grade hydrogen peroxide. Um, this is different than the 3%. Uh, it's stronger and you should definitely uh, be more careful with this and wear uh, safety gloves. Then we have ethylene glycol, which is the active ingredient in uh, your common antifreeze coolant. Um, you can get this obviously at any, basically anywhere, Walmart. Uh, you just want to make sure that it's not the 50-50 blend that we sometimes see. Um, you're going to want the one where the, uh, the main ingredient is ethylene glycol, which will be listed first in the ingredients. And then we just have your standard 70% nitric acid on a measuring cup. I'll put that in when I go outside just so the fumes don't uh, accumulate inside. Um, I'm not going to go into the math used to uh, get these proportions. I'll tell you this though, that the hydrogen peroxide is 49% of the total solution. The ethylene glycol is 22% and the nitric acid will be 29%. Um, I'll be using uh, this coil here, which is copper, uh, five grams. I've just coiled it and flattened it out. That's what I will use in the reaction. Um, as always, you're going to want uh, safety gloves and safety goggles. If this experiment works, we will not only have no fumes evolved from the base metal dissolving, but it will also take half of the normal amount of nitric acid to dissolve this base metal. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and put these chemicals together, take it outside, and I'll start the reaction. Okay, we're back. Um, I'm outside now. I have the solution of the 35% hydrogen peroxide, the 70% nitric acid, and the ethylene glycol. Um, what I've noticed is when adding all the ingredients, uh, namely the nitric to the other two components, uh, it became a cloudy solution. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the camera down very quickly so I can get the top off. I'm going to drop in the copper here, and I'm going to leave the cap uh, unscrewed so that too much pressure doesn't build up in this jar. Put this down quickly. Drop the copper in. And put the top on. You can already see a slight reaction. And there it goes. So far I don't see any uh, red fumes evolving. Um, the reaction seems to be a bit faster than normal. And steady she goes. Uh, what I'm going to do now is turn off the camera and I will get back to you in about five minutes to see where we're at. I'm back. Um, I decided to turn the camera back on to show you guys uh, 
It's only been about a minute since um, I tur last turned the camera off, and this seems to be working beautifully. I mean, the five grams of copper are dissolving very well. This, this is a very excellent reaction. Um, as you can see, there's no uh, red fumes coming out of this. So it seems that this uh, solution has actually reduced or totally eliminated the uh, red fumes usually caused in this reaction. Um, this is working very, very well. Uh, I'd imagine that since it's floating, it's already almost dissolved. Um, I'm just going to turn it off again. I just want to show you guys where this is at. And I'll be back. I am back. Um, it's been about 10 minutes since I last had the camera on. Um, the reaction has uh, substantially subsided. Uh, about a minute after I last had the camera on, some red fumes started to evolve. So what I did was I put a tiny swig of the 35% hydrogen peroxide and it uh, once again suppressed the red fumes. Um, the reaction has pretty much stopped so what I'm going to do is add a little bit of heat but from what I can see here uh, this has definitely uh, dissolved a great portion of the copper wire. It's much thinner than what it started out as. Uh, so I'm going to turn the camera off, let this sit and heat up for a while, and then I'll do the final weigh-in. Okay, everyone, I'm back, and I'm ready to report uh, my findings. Um, I must say I am very impressed with this solution. Um... As you can see here, this is the original coil I started out with that weighed 5 grams. Uh, it now weighs 1.5 grams. Um, as you can see, compared to the gauge of what I originally started out with, it's much thinner. Uh, this didn't totally dissolve, but that's because I actually stopped the reaction prematurely. I had it sitting in this container. Uh, boiling for about 20 minutes when I stopped the reaction it was still dissolving um, I have no doubt that this would have completely dissolved if I would have left it longer um, some factors to take into consideration are that I used a mason type jar uh, for the boiling um, I'm sure uh, one would get much better results with a boiling flask. Uh, the climate I'm in is very cold, so it m very well may be that this would have dissolved completely without the addition of heat in a warmer climate. Um, another thing to c take into consideration is I added a tiny, not much, a tiny swig of the 35% hydrogen peroxide when the red fumes started to evolve in the container. Uh, after adding that tiny swig for the next 20 minutes, there were no red fumes evolved. So the hydrogen peroxide does a great job of suppressing those red fumes. And according to the post, what is evolved is uh, oxygen. Um, like I said, I'm very impressed with this solution. Uh, it's it's just a monster solution. So, as you can see, this solution definitely works. Um, hopefully someone on the forum can come up with a uh, more accurate ratio of chemicals so that you don't have to add the small amount of uh, hydrogen peroxide during the reaction. And uh, that's it. I'll see you guys on the forum.